You've been listening to trade unionists, activists, Black Panthers, revolutionaries, and of course, anti-war activists. Read a letter by uh, Captain Habib Ahmed Zadeh, who came across the wreckage of Flight IR 655 10 years ago and 10 years after uh, Captain Will Rogers uh, commanded a ship, a missile cruiser in the Persian Gulf, um, commanded a, uh, a missile cruiser in the Persian Gulf, which uh, shot down that civilian airliner. And we have the author of that letter, Captain uh, Habib Ahmed Zadeh, in the studio. Um, quite moving hearing, hearing that, of course, by war activists uh, thousands of miles away. Um, uh, I suppose now we know the motivations in a sense of what made you write it. What, what do you think of the letter uh, 10 years on? Uh, do you think it still holds uh, just as true as it did then? Thank you. Let me just correct something before I continue. The accident happened 20 years ago and the letter was written 10 years ago. And some parts of the plane are still caught between the corals, still. And the 100 passengers that were never found, I still think about them. And what I'm basically trying to say is that why do people throughout history repeat past mistakes? Why is it that one generation commits certain mistakes and the next generation repeats those mistakes? So in the dialogue between civilizations, politicians are always talking with other politicians and actors and artisans are in contact with one another, but no military person is allowed to talk with people from other militaries. And many situations are wrong. So I thought that it would be best to convey our emotions to those people, and this will be effective. So this letter was an Let's effort talk about that, in dialogue. Uh, military dialogue uh, in a moment. I mean, the actual, you've studied quite a lot about this incident. As you said, 290 died. Thinking back, I mean, uh, there have been many, many comments, many histories written about it. Was there a decoy ship? Um, was there, uh, did Captain Will Rogers, was he under orders by the United States? He won the medal, which you mentioned in your letter. Thinking back now, do you think it was on purpose? Because, of course, we must remember that at that time, it was around the time of the Iran-Contra scandal. I mean, the United States was supplying weapons to both sides, to Iran as well, then supplying, of course, the Contra uh, killers in Nicaragua. Take us back to that time and the context of that time, because it seems quite cloudy. I mean, Iran taking weapons from the United States around the same time as this plane was shot down. Well, this is a good question. Well, your question is in two parts. One, the reasons behind the uh, shooting down of the plane and the situation in that time. I didn't want to uh, accentuate our differences. I wanted to find common ground. And uh, my impression is that, well, this issue is wrong, but why did this happen? It's very important as I see it. Will Rogers, he's a criminal, and uh, well, should we condemn him all the time? And uh, what about the culpability of the American administration and uh, the responsibility of others involved? And also, it's very easy to kill a person which you do not attach any humanity to, which you do not perhaps respect. And in the American system, the connection or the connect with, uh, with 
with the environment and uh, nature is not there anymore. And uh, I think that we need to make a connection with the other on the um, people on the other side of the seas. And it's very important that we do. So the question is how we can prevent such incidents from happening in the future. This letter was written before September 11th, and uh, on an innate level, I believe that uh, we should have uh, established such a contact, and others could not have misused uh, this dialogue, as I see it, and uh, but commit certain Habib, um, Obviously, oh. since the Nuremberg trial, and of course we know uh, I mean, your letter, I think, was redolent of, I don't know, Siegfried Sassoon, the poets of the First World War. We know since Nuremberg that officers now, uh, ever since that judgment, uh, cannot say they were just following orders. And yet, we've seen Abu Ghraib, we've seen um, countless atrocities, Fallujah. Um, do you now think things have actually got worse rather than better? Well, maybe it's because the media has become stronger. And of course, you can't cover everything up. And uh, there are very uh, eagle eyes, if I can use the word, that are monitoring everything. And uh, Abu Ghraib is a reality. And in those days, of course, we didn't have such monitoring. And in my own city, the city of Abadan, we were surrounded by the forces of Saddam, and there were no cameras there to report. And some years later, Sarajevo was in the very heart of Europe, and whatever happened over there, you would see it in the television. But scripts. perhaps the media hasn't made much Hope difference then. Of course, one doesn't want to get into the calculus of death. Six million dead in Indochina over all those wars, French and American. But uh, the media, the photographs, has it actually made any difference? Well, the media today are performing in a different manner, as I see it. When, well, when you are bombarded by information, you cannot distinguish between what is correct and what is fictitious. And today, this is what they are doing. And also the lies as told by the US government with regards to the Airbus incident. In the first days, everyone is uh, listening closely and they said many lies. They said that an F-14 was behind, hiding behind the plane. It's like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, what they're saying. And hundreds of radars are working at any given time. No plane can uh, hide behind another plane and other statements which were more of a joke than anything else. So they want to take away from the severity of the issue two years down the line. Not many people will still be sensitive about that. And well, they gave WMDs to the Iraqi government. They used such weapons. 5,000 people were killed in Halabja. 